So you've got a Can-Am Defender and you can't get back to the dealer every single service to get the maintenance done. Well, look, it is important to go to your dealer from time to time to make sure that these services are done really, really well. They've got the accessories, they've got the computer systems, they've got everything they need to make sure your machine is kept up to such a high standard. But in between, every now and then, if you need to do a service yourself, Can-Am actually have service packs. As you can see here, this is your oil change pack and we've got an air filter pack. Inside the oil change pack, I'll just open it here, you have an oil filter, you have your, uh, your seals and rings, so basically you have your, your rubber ring, which is a seal for the outer for the oil filter, and then just be careful and check which year model you have, because there's two different crush tubes here for your sump plug. Uh, depending on which year it is, you'll use one and the other one will get thrown over your shoulder on the workshop floor. Inside this box, we also have three bottles of oil, which is more than enough to do an oil change. In here, I've also got an air filter, which is a genuine Donaldson air filter. If you take your air filter out and it's dirty, it's grubby, don't just try to clean it out. They're a disposable item. Chuck it out, get a new one, they're not expensive. Throw it in, it's gonna protect your motor. So I'll give you a quick rundown on a Defender that we have here in the workshop, which is just about due for a service. Um, but realistically, there's a lot more involved than you think. It's not just dropping the oil, topping it up and changing the air filter. There's a lot of things that go into it, which is why when you take your machine into the dealership, it can take half a day up to a full day to do a good service on a machine. So yes, you can probably do just a quick oil change and air filter check every now and then, but you need to get it back into your dealership fairly regularly to make sure it gets done properly. If you have a look in the operator's guide, which comes with your machine, you'll notice that it has a maintenance section and there is a lot of information and your dealer will go through and do every single step that's in there. So it's quite involved. But the basic oil change and check, I'll give you a run through now. One of the great things about the Can-Am Defender is the engineers have created the machine to be able to be serviced and maintained mainly from just underneath the tray. So if you lift this handle, You can get the tailgate up that high, but to really get in there, you pull this little R clip out, get that up out of the way, and the tray tips right up out of the way so you can access all of the, uh, all the areas underneath the machine. If you have a look in this machine, this hasn't been cleaned yet, just have a dive in there and just have a look at the condition it's in. That's a pretty good one. In all honesty, most of these machines will come in from the farm, they haven't been cleaned, and it's gonna take the apprentice in the workshop sometimes a couple of hours just to clean it enough to be able to get to all of the inspection points. So make sure if your machine's going into the dealership, give it a clean first so you're not paying them to do it. But for yourself to do this sort of work, give it a really thorough clean first up. So first thing we're gonna check, which is something that you're gonna check every time that you use the machine, is the air filter, which is a genuine Donaldson air filter. It's just three clips here. That just pops off. And there's your air filter. Now that's in pretty good condition. Um, you might just give that a quick blowout. You probably wouldn't bother replacing that. That's a pretty good one. Okay, I'll just pop that back in for now. The next thing I'll be checking is your fluid levels. So this is your radiator pressure cap. This gives you your indication of how much coolant's in there. So as long as you're somewhere between the minimum level and the maximum level, you're good to go. If it's too low, just crack the top and top her up. This bottle here is your fluid for your windscreen wiper washer. So again, just check that. Make sure there's plenty of fluid in there. This one's a little bit low, so I'd be topping that up. Otherwise, you're gonna be driving down the road, go to clear your windscreen, and it's just gonna be scratching across a dry windscreen. We don't want that. This is your CVT air intake. So this is the air that goes into the machine and keeps your belt nice and cool. So it's important to keep this clean. Generally, you can take it off, but if, as long as you just give it a good wipe, you can see this one's pretty filthy that it might require taking off and giving a clean, but as long as you give it a, a wipe so it's clear and the air can get in there, you should be right. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check underneath the machine and we're gonna drain the oil. Normally you'd be climbing around on the dirt or on the floor of your workshop, but if you've got a hoist, happy day. So we've got her up on the hoist, the safety's on. The sump plug for the engine is right here and the genuine bash plates have a hole in there so you don't have to take all these bash plates off, which is great because they're riveted on anyway. So you undo that, make sure you've got a tray underneath you and get out of the way. Remember to make sure to check what year machine you've got because you're gonna need one of these little 
crush washers to go on that sump plug when you put it back in. So once it's drained, let it completely drain, put the correct, correct crush washer on, uh, and then put that plug back in, and then we'll lower the machine back down. Okay, next we need to take the old oil filter out and put a new one in. So, so three torx bits there. You just undo that, and when you put the new oil filter in, remember to put the new O-ring in as well, and then we will be ready to top up the oil. So this is your dipstick right here. This is where we check the oil, and this is also where we top the oil up. So we just unscrew that. There should be nothing on the dipstick because we've drained it. And we pour both of the big bottles in there and most of the small bottle as well. Then we'll put this back in, get the machine up to operating temperature and keep checking it, and just check to make sure you've got exactly the right amount of oil from that dipstick, and you are good to go as far as oil is concerned. Next we'll check the brake fluid levels. Uh, this is your, your reservoir bottles here. Funnily enough, the back one is the front brakes and the front one is the back brakes. But don't ask me why. Um, you can see on the sides, you've got a max and a minimum level. It's just a matter of cleaning that off and making sure you can see there. That's right up to the maximum level, so that's completely fine. While we're here, we're also going to have a look at the radiator. As you can see, that one's nice and clean. If it does need cleaning, you can blow it out. This front panel here just comes off with these speed clips. They're nice and quick and easy to get off, and you can give it a good blowout. And again, we're lucky enough here in this workshop to have a hoist, so we're going to get back underneath the machine. We just want to check the CV boost, and we want to check all of the linkages, check all the grease nipples. Right, these are your CV shafts. These are your CV joints in here, and these rubber boots are the CV boots, funnily enough. You just want to check those. You're probably going to have to clean them off because they might be covered in mud and crap. Make sure they don't get split. If you have a split in one of those and start getting moisture in there and the grease comes out, then they start to get a lovely clicking noise, which means you probably have to replace them. But if you keep your eye on these CV boots all the time and each of these CV shafts have one at either end, both front and rear, keep your eye on them and you shouldn't have any problems. So this is your rear CV boots, so these are, are looking completely fine. Something you'll see here, we've also already greased all the grease nipples. So under here, all of the linkages have grease nipples on them, all the way, so anywhere where there's moving parts, where there's moving linkages, front and rear, just check those grease nipples uh, and give them plenty of grease. One last thing you want to check is just go around and do a visual inspection, make sure there's nothing coming loose, nothing you can see that's not quite right. Um, check all your wheels, give them a bit of a wriggle, don't go too much if it's up on a hoist, but you'll quickly feel and see if there's anything amiss. Uh, go right through underneath the machine, uh, just give it one final check before you bring it back down. So that's basically it. There's not much to doing a basic service and uh, basic maintenance on a Defender. Everything's very easy to access and easy to do. But remember, at least every second service, take it to your local dealer. They know what to look for. They can pick things up before they go wrong. It's really, really important to utilise your local dealer. They're very clever when it comes to this stuff. But the in-between services, have a crack yourself, why not?